57 and Jeff Gordon, who's won three of the last five races here. The second row, Dale Jarrett, who has finished fourth in the last two races, and Dick Trickle with his best Bristol start since 1990. The third row, Mark Martin, the 93 winner of this event, and Ken Schrader, who's finished in the top 15 in the last six Winston Cup races. Row number four, Sterling Marlin, nine top tens in 25 Bristol events, and David Green, who won a Bush race here in 94. The fifth row, Derry Cope with his best start of 97, and Ward Burton, who finished eighth here a year ago. The sixth row, Wally Dallenbach in his eighth Bristol start, and Ted Musgrave, who finished third at Michigan last Sunday. And the seventh row, Jeff Burton, ninth here two years ago, and Ricky Craven, who missed the spring race due to injury suffered at Texas. And in the eighth row, we find Jeff Bodine and Rusty Wallace. Rusty won his first ever NASCAR Winston Cup race here at Bristol. And we're getting ready to go as we look at the rest of the field. They're tightening up, getting ready for the green flag. You can see the champion, Perry Labonte, starting back there in row 10. A lot of good cars scattered all throughout the field. Less than a lap to go before we get the green flag here at Bristol. Bobby Hamilton, Jeff Green. Back in row 15, there's Mike Skinner leading rookie, Ernie Irving, a winner here. Row, seven, row 17, Michael Walter, and Dale Earnhardt, all these cars pitting on the backstretch. And a driver has not won from the backstretch position ever in this night race here at Bristol. And there you see the drivers who have taken the provisionals. We have three drivers who fail to miss the field, to make the field, I should say, here tonight. The green flag comes out, and we're racing at Bristol in the goodies heading counter 500. Kenny Wallace got himself a good jump. But Dale Jerry will lead the first lap. Well, there's the five points that he needs in his championship battle, and now he begins to draw away from the field as Jeff Gordon is second in the battle for third between Dick Trickle and the pole sitter. Kenny Wallace said on NASCAR today that his car was not very good. They changed four shots of sway bar just before the race. And he had to be a little bit tentative there at the beginning, Benny, to wonder how the car was going to feel when he went into the corner. Kenny Wallace has not led a lap this year. We thought maybe he would lead that first one, but not so as Dale Jarrett took the man. So he's still looking for his first lap led in 1997. He last led a NASCAR Winston Cup race back in October at Charlotte. There's the Burton brothers, Ward Burton 22, Jeff Burton in 99. Oh, 99, a little bit loose as he comes off that second corner. David Green right behind Jeff Burton, and then comes Ted Musgrave. 78 car, we understand, is smoking a bit out there. Yes, and he's going to the pits. That is black flag, as a matter of fact. That's Gary Bradbury in the 28 car, who's headed for the backstretch pit. Had a great qualifying run. He was the only driver in second round qualifying to make it into the field. Everybody else stood, and he beat everybody that stood and started 26 here tonight. Taking a look from Rusty Wallace's onboard camera, looking back to Jimmy Spencer, and Rusty's got a battle to get up front. Well, he has been working on Jeff Bodine for several laps, Bob. But Jeff is holding that inside groove. Look how close he comes in the corners. Rusty Wallace running 15th currently. Jeff Bodine is 14th. I believe Rusty's car might be a little bit faster, but there is so little difference in the speed of these cars in qualifying that it's very difficult to pass another car. Down to John Curtin car in the pits. It's an oil, a transmission oil leak as the crew underneath the car looking and you see fluid dripping out onto the exhaust pipe. That's where the smoke is coming from. Gary Bradbury, who had uh, done such a good job to make the field here, sitting on pit road going laps down. We'll see if they can get this uh, fixed. And Jeff Gordon's making a move out on the track. Well, he's at least closing in on the leader, Dale Jarrett. Jarrett's lead was over a half second a couple of laps ago. It's now down to just a matter of car lengths, actually, about a third of a second. And these two cars got pretty good distance on the third place car, Dick Triple, the Hollick Myers car. And right in the middle of the corner, 
Jeff Burton just closes in Zane Jarrett. Mark Martin is running in fourth position, and the pole sitter Kenny Wallace has dropped back to fifth now as we continue to watch this battle up front. Jarrett and Gordon. Shot here from the Pennzoil copter cam. As we watch these drivers race around the first and second turns, and Jeff Gordon takes the lead after uh, Dale Jarrett had led the first 13 laps. Jet goes down the corner right there. We see his car goes up the hill. That time stayed down pretty well. They went up the hill, and Jeff Gordon jumped at the chance to take the lead. One of the crew members said that Jared's car, one of the problems they were having with it in practice was that it was a little bit tight in the center of the corner. Just couldn't get it to turn, and that's sort of an indication of what you were saying. And we have a crash here on the main straightaway. Several cars involved in it. Down. And the caution is out for the first time here in Bristol after 16 laps. It looks like the 95 car, Ed Barrier, is the only car that's going to get left in the situation. Now his car is moving again, and I don't see any damage. There's certainly no damage to the right side. I don't think there's any damage to the left side. There was a lot of smoke, but I don't think a great deal of damage to any car as a result of that little spin off of corner number four here on the main straightaway. Ed had himself a good qualifying run, too. He qualified in 21st position here. Take a look at it again, see if we can determine what happened. Starts back in the back in the middle of three and four, and, and uh, Barry just stands on the gas. The car goes around, keeps the car going in circles, and doesn't hit anything. But, boy, the smoke that we see come up, all the other cars, the visibility was obscured, and Michael Walter made about a half a spin. He gets his car riding and not a lot of damage. And from the Mike Skinner onboard camera, we take a look at it. He was lucky to get through that one. <laughs> he was. We saw Michael Walter back off there and someone ran the back of him and around he went. So caution out here at Bristol the first time tonight. Mike Skinner's got some damage there on the right front of his car and also on the right side. And he and Johnny Benson come into the backstretch pits. John Kernan. Mike Skinner pulls into his pit. Uh, you can see the damage on the right side of the, car, the contact out there on the racetrack. They'll have to pull that away. They've had a problem uh, struggling with the handling on this car all weekend long. This is the same car that Dale Earnhardt won the second Brickyard 400 with. And you can see the crewman going to work pulling that right front fender and a lot of cars on the back pits. Chad Little is on here. Johnny Benson is on here. Also, Michael Walter, Blake Speed, Brett Bodine. And here comes the pace car. And they, oh! And Skinner almost runs into his crewman, and he's going to not beat the pace car out. He'll lose a lap. Stop, or the stop sign is out. Okay, Dan, updating you on Dale Jarrett. You mentioned a moment ago that DJ had a problem in that last practice. Indeed, what he had, as you said, was the car had a bad push, meaning the car was so tight they couldn't get the car to turn in the corners. They made an adjustment in the car just before the race. Todd Parrott was telling me, and a moment ago, as they were watching the car go up the racetrack, they were possibly thinking, well, maybe the car's got a bad push. But just as Gordon went by, DJ came on the radio and said, loose, loose, loose indicating the car was very loose getting in the corner. He was having to drive it up the racetrack to chase the back end, and that's why Gordon got by. And Jeff continues to lead here with Jared in second position. 19 laps completed. Caution still out here at Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be back with more of our live cutter speedway where the green is back out, and Jeff Gordon continues to lead. He has now led the last eight races here at Bristol. He led 125 laps in the spring. Yesterday in two practice sessions, Bob, Jeff Gordon was, was the fastest and uh, had a great qualifying run. Hey, passing going on here for seventh place. Sterling Marlin losing positions. Gary Cope goes by. Kenny Schrader goes by. There goes Wally Dolan back by. Here comes Jeff Burton trying to close that spot. He will. Ward Burton will try to do it. Once you get hung out there on the outside, it's just a matter of uh, hoping somebody will let you in, isn't it? And Rusty Wallace trying to dive on the inside of Ward Burton. 
the board positioned himself to try to get on the inside of Sterling Marlin, but he couldn't do it. As you can see, Lance Hoover, the car number one, has just been lapped. He spun just after the green flag came out, but it did not cause a caution. Here it is. Here we see him going the corner, up the hill, and around he goes. Well, if he made any contact with the wall or not. If he did, he just barely brushed it. Looks like he might have just barely brushed it, Benny, but I don't believe he did any damage. Now look what he does. Look at this. Perfect. No caution. The car well off the racetrack. He kept going, but is down a lap now. Back he's down two laps as Jeff Gordon continues to lead. And Rusty Wallace continuing to move toward the front. Jimmy Spencer also to the inside of Ward Burton. Yeah, Jimmy's coming right about everywhere the rest is going. Jimmy is following him right through. And David Green trying to get through also in the Caterpillar car. And Sterling Marlin, who was high on the racetrack, saw the distance that Rusty Wallace was able to make up. Jimmy Spencer won the push Grand National Division race last night here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Right now he's in 12th position. Right on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace, they go to the high side to pass Lance Hooper. And John Kernan has an update on Lance Hooper. Well, Bob, as you can see, he just barely brushed the wall up in turns one and two. The spotter says there's just a little damage on the right rear of the car. Other than that, it's okay, but Lance has radioed in and told the crew that the car is very loose coming out of the turns. Let's go to the front stretch pit Dr. Jerry Punch. While John Sterling Marlin has the opposite problem, he just radioed Robert Larkins that he's getting passed by more and more cars, and he has developed a severe push. The car really ran right there in the middle of turns one and two. The car very high on the racetrack. He cannot get the car to turn, and it's costing him a lot of position. He's back to 11th position, and now make that 12th as Jimmy Spencer makes the move around to the inside. continues to move up as Kenny Wallace continues to go the wrong way. That's a battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh. And eighth. Because Jeff Burton is also going to take that position away, I believe. Yep. So a strong run for Derry Cope here in the early going as he runs in fifth spot. Well, now I take that back. <laughs> Slipped just a little bit and lost all of those positions. Three of them. Doesn't take much, does it? And Dale Jarrett goes back in the lead. So on the 39th lap, gives a lead back to Dale Jarrett. He led the first 17 or 16 that Jeff Gordon took over, and now Jarrett is back at the front. Looking back from Hutt Strickland's Circuit City car to the leaders. Now, Hutt is currently in 37th position. He's the last car on the lead lap. Now, you see that Dick Triple and Mark Martin are very, very close to the leaders. First four cars running just a few car lengths apart. And here they come quickly. Hutt ran up behind the car number one of Lance Hooper and had to break really to get around him, and Lance goes high this time. Green, Dahlenbach, Musgrave, and Jeff Bodine running very closely out there. 13th on back. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Wally Dahlenbach's the one hung out to dry right now. He, he's definitely odd man out for Jeff Bodine. Just a little bit loose coming off the corner at the back off the accelerator, which allowed Dallin back to squirt out in front of him. Wally drops back to 15. Well, you can see how quickly those turns come up when you look out the windshield for those in-car cameras. And now the Wallace brothers right there. momentarily side by side. Rusty passes, so does Jimmy Spencer. Here's Kenny Wallace back to the 10th spot. started in 16th position and we're 43 laps into this race and he is up into the top 10 tonight. Here's Bill Weber. 
And Rusty's pretty happy with that car as he moves toward the front of the field. A little tight in the middle of the turn. A little concerned about that, but the car coming to Rusty. Also, Jimmy Spencer right behind the two. A little concerned about his water temperature. It was rising a little bit. He's also a little tight, but told his crew nothing to worry about. Ted Musgrave, the last thing he said in half the hour was this car was loose, bad loose. Now early in the race, it's tight, bad tight. Might have overcorrected on the 16 Ford. Mark Martin takes third position from Dick Trickle. The Mark Martin at Babylon Ford has been very, very quick all summer long, and he's proven it again as he moved into third spot. Yeah, he's always quick. He, he's quick on just about every racetrack, as you said, all summer long. He just a There is his teammate, drive. Jeff Burton. You have to mention, the, well, look at this traffic here on the main straightaway wow. as, the, as Jared and Gordon both trying to get around Rick Mast. Jared got completely sideways the last time off turn two. This time he was able to make the pass. Gordon will go by, and Martin now has caught Jeff Gordon. And you look in front, down in three and four, just a half straightaway in front is about 15 cars. The leader's going to try to work their way through. When we come back from break, they will be in the midst of that huge group of cars there. Ray Everham looks on as his driver, Jeff Gordon's run second to Dale Jarrett. Back in a moment. Things are changing with almost every lap. Jeff Gordon is back out in front. Jeff Burton just took second place away from Dale Jarrett with Mark Martin running in fourth position. Now, one of the reasons why we had so many positions change is because we had another spin down here on the main straightaway, but uh, everybody got out pretty cleanly. Here it is. Ernie over the 28 car goes on the inside of the 42 of Nemechek, and Ernie does a 360 or 720, and look at all the cars going inside, outside. Here comes the leaders. Jarrett slows because of the caution flag. Hey, no caution flag. Jeff Gordon goes by, and Jeff... Burton goes by his teammate Mark Martin to take over third, which is now in second spot. And from the Pennzoil copter cam, we take a look at it once again. Nemechek had some damage to his car. I don't think that Dahlenbach made contact with Ernie, and you can see everybody else got out unscathed. And Jeff Burton Jeff. trying to go for the lead. Oh, oh, he's not only trying, he did it. Well, Jeff Gordon had to back off just a little bit. He ran up on Ernie Urban coming off turn two, and Burton had a run, took advantage of it. So he becomes our third different leader so far in this race. 62 laps complete. Uh oh, contact! Uh -oh. <laughs> Ernie well, keeps Ernie stays up there. Wow. I'm sure Gordon wanted to do that. He followed him for about 10 laps and couldn't, couldn't get by. He was trying to pass him very cleanly, but Jeff uh, Burton bumped him just a little bit, but still is behind him. So Ernie trying desperately to stay on the lead lap. He's in 33rd position right now. Burton trying to get him loose, and when he gets to the inside, if he ever does, he'll be able to get past him. I may have a nope. Nope. Nice save, though, by Ernie Irvin moments ago. Coming off turn four, he gets off the gas a little bit, and Jeff Burton taps him in the rear, and that was a great save. And Jeff could have gassed it right then. I believe Benny got him up on the inside of it. Back on the gate in time to make the uh, correction. And the yellow is out. Ernie's getting what he needs. Wise to have fought to stay on the lead lap because now he gets to go around the racetrack. Or at least half of the racetrack. Caution out for the second time here this afternoon. At the end of 67 laps. John Kernan. Kyle Petty, who's pulled his Pontiac behind the wall, the crewman underneath going to work, an overheating problem. In fact, the engine temperature is running as hot as 280 degrees. They are putting some water in, but it was wanting to spit it back out. It also, uh, they're looking in the area of the rear end gear, and quite honestly, that's what it smells uh, like. You, there was a lot of smoke coming out uh, from the rear of the car, so they may have burned up the uh, rear end gear. Kyle Petty's best finish here at Bristol was in April of 1993. He finished third. Now we see those on the lead lap making pit stops. Bill Weber. 
Jeff Burton is on pit road along with all the leaders. Burton getting right side tires. This should be routine stops under caution. Some guys might try it and take two for track position. Burton gets four. They swing around to the left side. Rusty Wallace also in. He getting left side tires now. Right's already on. Yule going in. Gordon is also on pit road. Jerry Punch. Four tires. Jeff Gordon right side, left side tires. Gordon got a slight tough problem with the car loose. Dale Jarrett made a track bar adjustment and he in the 99 and Gordon crammed their way back to turn one. Let's go to John Kernan. Dale Earnhardt is in a little damage on the left front bender. Now the crew swings around to the left side of the car. The jack goes up. We expect him to take the rubber out of the left rear. Now the what that's being tightened. Dale Earnhardt is down and away. And Daryl Waltrip coming out and several others on the back stretch. While Johnny Benson completes his work back there. And Jimmy Spencer was the one that really benefited from all this now. Yeah, I think he must have just taken on two tires, Bob, because he came out first to, on this uh, round of pit stops. There you see Earnhardt and Hamilton uh, catching up to the field. Watch this when the cars come out of the field. Dale Jarrett is moving. Jeff Gordon is moving. Jeff Burt tries to beat them all to the line, and it was very, very close. Looked like it might have been Jeff Gordon. I don't have to. In the 25 pit, we'll see what happens to him, Ricky Craven. We see the angle he had to go in there was not where he wanted to be, but that's the way when he got to his pits, there wasn't, wasn't much room there. But look, was that one of Ted Musgrave's crew members? And he was not too happy about that, but hey, <laughs> that's racing on the short tracks. Tempers flare not only on the racetrack, but also in the pit area. Ricky Craven comes in for another stop as we are under caution here at Bristol. 70 laps into the Goodies Headache Powder 500. Then he got to the inside of Joe Nemechek, then went spinning. He damaged Nemechek's car, but there was very little damage to any other car. Then later, as he tried desperately to stay on the lead lap, he made a nice save. Then the yellow came out, and he did indeed stay on the lead lap. Here's John Kernan. Ernie Irvin has been on and off pit road several times, uh, taking advantage of this caution. They've changed tires, made a track bar adjustment. This last time in, they had to tape up the left front nose of the car. When he got into someone out there, it kind of punched a hole in that, so they had to cover that hole up. Mark Reno's crew chief tells me everything else should be okay for Ernie Irvin, although he is at the back of the pack. This year has not been as good for Ernie as last year in terms of points position at this juncture in the season. This year he's 14th in the points. Last year he was 7th. Well, from our Pennzoil copter cam, we can see this beautiful facility nestled in the hills of northeast Tennessee. They call it Bristol Motor Speedway, and it is one of the most incredible short tracks that you can ever find. And all this here, folks, are suites, luxury suites, high atop the grandstands. I was uh, recuperating from my back surgery in April when we raced here, so this is the first time that I have gotten a chance to see the suites and everything that have been built in the last year. It is unbelievable. It really is. It really is. I understand they're going to build more. Yep. Well, in April of 1996, 71,000 fans saw the race here. And look at the uh, attendance tonight, 125,000. And by the time we return here in the spring of next year, they will have added more seats to a capacity of 131,000. And we would also like to point out that 20 years ago, in 1977, just 12,000 attended the race here. Okay, we're back to green flag racing. Jimmy Spencer is the leader, and Wally Dolan back down on the inside, trying to get back on the lead lap. And if Spencer did on the second two, which we think that he did, we'll see how long, how that might work for him. We understand that Rusty Wallace had an air gun go bad during that pit stop. <laughs> These cars have made pit stops. The crew's been able to make adjustments on the cars. Boy, Wally is working hard to try to get back on the lead lap. The black flagging David Green in the 96 car. Jerry White. 
on the previous caution flag, Bob. He drugged the jack down pit road to give him a stop and go penalty. He came in. They wanted him to go to the backs along this line. He did not. On the restart, they're going to black flag him and bring him down pit road again. And he's gone a lap down as a result of that. That's too bad. And Wally Dahlenbach does get back in the lead lap. And Jimmy Spencer's going to lose the lead to Jeff Gordon. Whoa! Jeff Gordon, Spencer side by side and give the lead back to Jeff Gordon. The 31 car of Mike Skinner is a lap down. Spencer is second after taking two tires on that most recent round of pit stops. Now he's probably wishing he had four. He would have taken four. Also oh, contact. Dale Jarrett and Jimmy Spencer get together a little bit. Spencer maintains his second spot, however. Hot Strickland is a lap down. We ride along with him. He's in 35th spot. But he's right behind the leader. And there's a crash on the back stretch. It looks like Joe Nemechek. And the caution flag waves. And here comes Skinner trying to get a lap back. And he and Dolan back both will get back on the lead lap. Hutch Strickland's trying, but he's not going to be able to make it. We understand that there may have been contact with the 21 car. Vincent Jones spinning down the back stretch. This is the third caution of the evening. Oh, it's pretty serious damage to yep. the rear of the Bell South car. Hmm, that's too bad. Here's a replay of uh, Nemechek. I see the 21 car they're talking about was very close to the 42 car, and that's all the damage came when he backed in the inside retaining wall. That's tough. And the crew goes to work on it. On the back stretch there is Michael Waltrip also coming in the back stretch pit. And John Kernan is down there in Nemechek's pit. The left side tires were both flat, so they changed them a lot. Joe Nemechek is he pulls away. I'm sure he'll have to come back on pit road, put right side tires on, and still do a little more fabrication uh, under fire here on the back stretch. But it looks like a lot of significant sheet metal damage for Joe Nemechek's car. We had 31. Now we've got 33 cars back on the lead lap, and here is another replay. Here he comes, and boom! <laughs> That's where the damage was done. Now the Pennzoil copter cam. Look up top. Yes, I think that he and Michael did make some contact as the two cars came off the corner. And there's the contact with the inside wall. 85 laps completed here at Bristol. We've had four leaders so far. Jeff Gordon is back in front. Jimmy Spencer second. Completed just one lap under green. There's Jeff Gordon, the leader. Behind him is Rick Mast. He's a lap down. Here comes Dale Jarrett trying to put Mast a lap down. And Jarrett just moved in front of Jimmy Spencer on the last lap down to turn three and four. And then we have the 99 and the six. They're running fourth and fifth. The eight car, Hutt Strickland, jumped away. There's a crash. Darrell Walters and the pole setter, Kenny Wallace, involved here. Some pretty good damage to Darrell Walters' Western Auto Show. Well, he got you. Twelve wins here at this facility for Darrell Waltrip. I don't think he's going to add a 13th tonight, and I don't think that Kenny Wallace is going to pick up the $83,600 in Unical bonus money. Nope, it doesn't look like Bob Hunter was about to say when this happened was that Hutt Strickland was running out in front of Jeff Gordon. He was getting the black flag because he had jumped the restart and came down to the start-finish line ahead of Jeff Gordon. They were giving him the black flag. So I don't know if they take that back away from him or what happens now. And we see the radiators broken on Darrell Walton's car. The water there. there you go, buddy. You see what happens? Wow, there were three deep. I know that coming off of turn yeah. four, and that just simply won't get it. Kenny Wallace got forced up into the outside wall and then turned sideways. Here he comes off the corner, and Steve Grissom maybe touches him a little bit, gets him loose. Bobby Labonte in the middle there. Oh, the green look car. at Earnhardt. <laughs> With Darrell nowhere to go, and wham, right into the wall down on the inside. 
Ned was talking about just a moment ago, Hutt Strickland jumping the restart. Here's Hutt Strickland, the A car. They come off the corner. And there we can see he clearly is in front of the 24. The 24 car is the leader, race, leader of the race. He restarts the races at his discretion. And the A car clearly jumped in. I think Hutt uh, anticipated Gordon accelerating right there. He didn't do it. Here's Earnhardt in the pits. Back stretch. Well, he was very lucky to have survived that little incident. And we re he's reporting a tire up. John Kernan? That's exactly right. On the right side of the number three Chevrolet Monte Carlo, the uh, crew changing right side tires. They had to pull the fender out. Barely some more contact out there on the high banks of Bristol. And Dale had to come in taking advantage of this caution to pull the fender off the tire because if you uh, run a lot of laps with that fender rubbing, you probably blow the tire out. So this was a break for him. We see the damage to the right side of Dale Earnhardt's car. And then, you know, the A car, Hutt Strickland, obeyed the black flag. He came in the pits under the caution flag. So he obeyed the black, and he's now in the lead lap. Yep, there you go, on the lead lap. So that... 28th position, and looks like he's coming back in to the pits. Got to change some tires. So almost 100 laps completed here. We're getting close to it. 93 completed here at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's Jeff Gordon leading. We'll be right back. Break on lap number 90, and here's what happened. As it was contact between Steve Grissom and Kenny Wallace, Kenny goes up the track and runs out of racetrack. Dale Earnhardt just escapes. He collects, however, Darrell Waltrip who made hard contact with the inside wall. The green is out at lap number 97 as we go back to racing. David Green was the one on the inside, tried to get his lap back that time, but Gordon beat him to the first turn. Darrell Waltrip was involved in that incident. John Kernan is standing by with him. And the crew working on Darrell's car. Darrell, you're okay? What happened out there? Uh, it looked like when the 18 and the 3 got to running outside, I knew it was going to get a little touch and go. So we could go outside, but really it was kind of dangerous. I don't know if they got into Kenny or what happened. Kenny got in the wall, came off the wall, hit me in the, I guess the right front, drove me in the inside wall. I'm all right, but the Parts America Chevrolet is in bad shape. Yeah, they're going to need a lot of laps uh, back here to fix it so Daryl can get back out. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, pole sitter Kenny Wallace sitting in the car. Kenny, you took a, a little bit of a tap back there coming off turn four. What happened? Steve Grissom might just run all over me. You know, it's a shame. I mean, it's the same old deal. just running along there. I was on the bottom of the racetrack. I don't know how he could have got any lower, got underneath me. But come on before and just got run into and put in the wall. All right, the good news for Kenny Wallace. They're going to try to get the square D forward back out of this mostly cosmetic at the oil cooler and water gauges and everything are intact. We're watching Rusty Wallace move up into ninth position once again. By the way, they dedicated the grandstand to Daryl Waltrip this weekend, a 38,000-seat grandstand. Daryl Waltrip is at the moment behind the wall. He's only had one DNF this year and is currently 15th in points. There is Rusty Wallace and Jeff Bodine in the battle for the eighth spot. And Rusty goes into eight. Michael Walker just pulled the sit go ball Pence on the back stretch. There's Terry Labonte trying to pass Jeff Bodai too, and here comes Dick Trickle. He makes the pass. So move Trickle back up into the top 10 now. And Bodine falls to 11. Bill Elliott, the blue car. Tonight, the 94 is Elliott for you fans. Special car. Is this a one-race deal with no. that night? No, they will run it in a uh, few other races this year. They're uh, commemorating the uh, Big Mac. They're going to run it in uh, Richmond, New Hampshire, Loudon, Dover, and Martinsville. Jerry. Exactly, Bob. The first, the first, of, as we get a car spinning on the back stretch. All right, the 95 car is fun. No cost is right. You get the car right. That is Ed Barrier. And 
The 94 got through okay. That is the Max Tonight logo that's on the Bill Elliott car number 94. The first, as you said, Bob, of five events, basically celebrating the fact that uh, Bill Elliott is going to run this car at night here and in Richmond, Virginia. And by the way, they also have a special guest tonight in their pits, a guy by the name of Dan Grossi, who is the nation's leader in Big Mac consumption. He has eaten one Big Mac a day for the past 17 consecutive years. They estimate he's eaten 15,000 Big Macs. Benny, wow. how do you think you compare to that? Oh, man, I'm just a lightweight compared to that. We <laughs> see, Jeff Burton has moved into where? That third spot? Yep, past Jimmy Spencer last time around. Gets on the move again. Jeff Burton, remember, before that caution was very, very fast. In fact, he was, before the caution, when they made their pit stops, he was leading the race. Left track just got him a couple of seconds behind the leaders right now. Jeff Burton has nine top ten finishes in the last 13 races. Here's a 95 spin just a couple of laps ago. Comes off the corner, goes around, and Ted Musgrave just going by on the inside. Barrier does a great job, does yeah. about a 360, puts it in gear, continues on. You see all the cars stacking up as they try to avoid the accident that really never happened. There is Jeff Gordon, the leader of the race. He's coming up on the 29 car of Jeff Green. Green is running in 31st position. Still on the lead lap. Here's a Napa field summary. Watch for your favorite driver. The parentheses indicate starting position. They were three and rest there for a moment. And it looks like a Wally Dollarback's got a problem. Sure does. Seems very, very slow on the top of the racetrack. He will try to get down. Sapco team has had some good performances in recent races, but uh, Robbie Gordon didn't make tonight's field, and now Wally Dollenbach has a problem. And Joe Nemechek has right. already had a problem getting involved in an accident. Dollenbach's best finish here at Bristol was in the spring of 93. He finished 11th. Terry Labonte and Dick Triple goes by. They're running 9th and 10th. There's Jeff Bedard. He's in 11th. I think it might be a tire going down on Wally Dollenbach's car. So he continues to lose positions. Let's take a look at, yeah, there was some uh, contact there with uh, Hutt Strickland, huh? And yeah. Str look at this. Hutt Strickland <laughs> is 45 degrees right in front of the leaders. There's Jeff Gordon right behind him. That's why we saw that three abreast there for a moment. Yep. Now Gordon does get by Jeff Green. Here comes Terry Labonte moving up into the eighth position. And now Terry Cope's hung out to dry. And Triple goes by Cope. We understand that maybe Wally in that incident over there flat spotted his tires. He might have one going down. That's why he rode around slow for a lap. didn't do it a bad job. He's uh, back in 24th, but the car seems to be working well for him. He started back in 34th position, so he has gained 10 spots here in the first 119 laps. Just took another one there from Bobby Hamilton. It's strange, too, because on this restart, it looked like that Earnhardt had trouble. He was really struggling the first few laps. I guess when the tires, he changed tires, and I guess with the low air pressure, the car is just not very good. When the air pressure came into started rising and Earnhardt started going to the front. There you get an idea of how much of an interval there is between Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon, the leader. Here's Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader going at it and that moves Rusty to sixth. And so the six-time winner here at Bristol, Rusty Wallace, continues to pick him off. Pretty close with him is Terry Labonte. And now he has Ken Schrader between them. What? The leader, Jeff Gordon, once again, trying to go by us. Strickland. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> a little bump. Said, I'm still back here needing to go. And you got to be pretty darn accurate because you don't want to give them much of a bump or you're going to damage your own car, but you got to give them enough of a bump to, bump to let them know they're there. 
the tie charge right in front of Hutch Trickland, the winner of the Rick Garrett 400. Not, Rudd. not been a good weekend for Ricky Rudd. He started back in 39th position, taking a provisional to get in. He's running currently in 28th spot and just about to go a lap down. That's Trickland still trying to stay on that lead lap. Does get back in Schrader. Trickle comes right along. And Michael Walker is four laps down. Then he mentioned a moment ago that he's gone into pits on the back stretch. His car is very fast right now. John Kernan has more from the back stretch pit. Michael Walker had his pit twice over the last few laps, two separate times, for flat tires. And that was under the green. That's why he's lost money quite sure why he's cutting down tires. I think maybe something might be rubbing and uh, his tires. So you want to keep an eye on him. They hope they got the problem fixed. They pulled the fingers out, but they did have a problem with cutting down a couple of tires. As you can see on the scoring pile on there, Mark, Mark Martin has passed his teammate, Jeff Burton, and has moved into third, and he is moving in on the lead. And we also saw Dale Earnhardt pressing hard there. He's in 23rd. had been complaining before the last few rounds of pit stops that the car was tight. They made air pressure adjustments, pulled the rubber out, and now Larry McReynolds, by looking at the stopwatch, has told Dale that the car is as good as the leader. And Larry added, Dale, we have to keep on pushing. Right now, he's running in about the 23rd spot, but the car looks pretty good. <laughs> Coming up quickly on Ricky Craven there. Boy, these leaders are in heavy traffic. There's Ricky Rudd and Chad Little, both trying to stay in the lead lap. And they've been running side by side for about two laps, Danny, and Jeff Gordon has nowhere to go. <laughs> Ricky Rudd goes up the hill, lets the leaders go by. And Derek Cope piece the debris on the 36 car and fell off someone else's car. <laughs> He's caught it, dragging it around, and is sparking on the racetrack. He's back in 11th position. Wow, look at that piece. Yeah. All right, looked like a, a fender brace or something. Close to someone that could cut a tire, but it'd be a shame for him to get black flag because of somebody else's problem. Yes. Oh, and Earnhardt almost crashes down in one two, but he saves him. Went way up the hill, but uh, did save it, and he didn't lose a position. Yeah, here comes Craven now. Here it is once again. There's him go down the corner like he's on dirt. Uh, sideways, save it, baby, come on. There it is. Ernie goes back by. Yeah, he did lose one position to Ernie Irvin, but uh, Dale Earnhardt remains in 22nd position here as Gordon continues to lead at the end of 137 laps. Crossing here on ESPN tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway. Jeff Gordon, the leader at the end of 145 laps. Tomorrow, both ESPN and ESPN2 will have racing for you. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is at Watkins Glen for the Parts American 150 at 12.30 Eastern Time tomorrow. Then the Deuce has a NASCAR Modified Series, the Ruffles 150 at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And do not let Benny Parsons tell you about how he's going to helicopter from the racetrack to a jet and be taken there for tomorrow's coverage. He and Dave Despain. So folks, I talked with all that trouble, please tune in <laughs> <laughs> to see if, if you made it and uh, got any sleep. <laughs> yep, he'll make it, he'll get a little sleep, but he'll be right on top of it. Brett Bodine going a lap down in 26th position. Here's a Napa Field summary once again. We got a Chevy leading and then a whole bunch of Fords. 
Aaron Abani, Jeff Ford's teammate, back in seventh spot. Cope, Bobby Abani, back in 15th. John Andrani in 20th spot. The Earnhardt's worked his way up to 21st now. His teammate Skinner, 23rd. Bobby Hamilton, 25th. Missing cars are laps down. But Mark Martin tries to close in on the back bumper of Dale Jarrett. And Dollett back slows on the back stretch again. You can see he's running there in 33rd position, but drops down off the banking and goes to the apron of the racetrack. In fact, the right front tire is flat on Dollett back's car. He pits here on the front stretch as those running up front come off of corner number two. Next car to go lap down will be Bobby Hamilton. He is in the 25th position, and right on him is Jeff Gordon. Well, speed the nine car. He is a couple of laps down. New paint job on that 43 tonight, guys. So uh, they got the, a Fiddy's logo on the hood of it, commemorating 20 years of sponsorship and involvement in NASCAR Winston Cup racing. The folks at Goodies, of course, they're the sponsor of the race here tonight. And look at the incredible record that Jeff Gordon has on short tracks. 12 races, he's won 50% of them, and has never been lower than fourth. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Remember, Mike Skinner got his lead, got his lap back a few uh, few laps ago, and now is close to being lapped again. And there's Ernie Urban, not far from being lapped too. There's one car between he and the leader. And he was almost a lap down at one time, but uh, managed to stay in the lead lap. Steve Grissom going by Derek Cope, taking a spot away. Puts him up, puts Grissom in the 11th spot. He's still dragging that thing, whatever it is. Must have worn it out because it isn't sparking as much as it is. That cement will get sort of hard on it. Grind that metal right off. Look very good. Some more. Derry Cope's best finish here at Bristol was 10th. This race in 95. best to get up alongside 31 car because he can look at Samira he realizes that Jeff Gordon is just two car lengths behind him. Oh. Skinner can hardly go in place. Oh, Skinner gets sideways and he's saving. Yeah, he does. Wow. Nice going, but look at Gordon up top. There's some smoke. Is that the 28 car? Looks like, oh! Contact between the leader and Mike Skinner. Yeah, there is a little smoke up late from the Skinner goes a lap down to Jeff Gordon. Here's Dale Jarrett on the inside and sees some smoke from out there. He looks like a tail pop on the 28 car. And heavy traffic up ahead for Gordon and the others up front. Take a look at this again. Look at this, completely sideways off of two. Man, oh man, great job by Skinner saving that ride. And the 43 car got by Ernie Irvin on that new John, what do we see there coming out of Ernie's car? Smoke? That's what the spotter says going into the turn. You see a little smoke coming out of Ernie Irvin's car. In fact, about 10 laps ago, Mike Skinner reported that uh, there was some oil leaking from Ernie's car. But his crew up here doesn't seem to be too concerned at the moment. Right now, they're concerned with that bright 24 car putting their car a lap down. But Ernie's trying to hang on to keep an eye on it because we are seeing a little smoke coming out of the car in the corner. Well, just like earlier in the race, Irvin tries desperately to stay on the lead lap, but Jeff Gordon is trying desperately to put him back a lap, and what's going to happen? Ernie's going to go down. Ernie just quit all of a sudden. The speeds here at the line, you can see that uh, Gordon and Jared, because they were concerned with Ernie Irvin, uh, didn't have real fast laps. John Kernan has more. 
Bob Ernie has just radioed the crew and told them, I think the motor is starting to go away. Remember that smoke we saw apparently up here in the 23 car is Jimmy Spencer off the pace. Uh, so apparently an engine problem developing for Ernie Irvin who is beginning to miss just a little bit. He will pull off the racetrack from on the pit road. We would assume that the crew will go under the hood. They will. The hood will come up on Ernie Irvin's car. They will look in, try and see if it should be a, if it's a problem with the wire or something, but the engine definitely with a skip in it. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, Jimmy Spencer, I just talked to his crew. They said everything was going fine, but now Spencer sits on pit road with the hood up during the engine compartment. So Jimmy Spencer, who had a great ride going and used some pit strategy to help him get to the front, now sits on pit road as the laps go by. The 25 pit crew is also on the wall looking for Ricky Craven. They expect him to come down pit road, and here he does, sliding off of turn four, brings it down pit road in the crawl. Brings it into the pit, right front tire, flat. So Ricky Craven will get two right side tires. So for fuel in it as well. Craven guns the engine, the fuel's in, the tires are on, and Craven is away. John Kernan. They are putting the hood down on Ernie Irvin's car and will push him behind the wall. Apparently the problem, they've lost all the water in the engine. The radiator has had a brake rotor, a piece of brake rotor go through it. Let's go to Bill Weber. They continue to look at Jimmy Spencer's engine compartment. The lap continuing to go by, 171 on the board. So Spencer, who had high hopes for a great finish after the win here last night in the Bush Series, sees those hopes disappear in the darkness of Bristol. Back to the leader. Jimmy Spencer led 11 laps of this race, one of four leaders. And by the way, Ernie Irvin, who's behind the wall, won his first NASCAR Winston Cup race here in August of 90 and won his first pole here in April of 1990. The leader at the moment is Jeff Gordon with Dale Jarrett second, Mark Martin third, then Jeff Burton and Rusty Wallace. It is so much fun to come to Bristol Motor Speedway. The fans are always so energetic and enthused, and the racing is all so great. 125,000 people strong here tonight watching the Goodies Headache Powder 500. And we're watching our vantage point from the Pennzoil Copter Cam. Awesome facility, no question about it. And 182 laps are in the books here as Jeff Gordon continues to lead and is in heavy traffic. Bill Elliott is about to be lapped. He's in 17th position and in 16th spot is Dale Earnhardt. And that is Jeff Gordon right behind Bill Elliott. There's Earnhardt on the outside. He's been running the high line, Ned. Yes, he has. And Bill did a pretty good job of it, too. See, he goes up there again. Elliott goes up there, but Jeff Gordon jumps right up here, and he goes up there. Bill Elliott won the, the spring race back in 1988 here at Bristol. He goes a lap down here this evening. Oh, Earnhardt dives on the inside of Jenny Mayfield. Takes over a spot from Mayfield, puts him back to 16. That high line like Earnhardt's doing. You can pass a lot of cars up there because there's not a lot of people to be. Mark Martin, meanwhile, has closed up on Dale Jarrett. Mark in third position, there he is. Winner last week at Michigan. Jeremy Mayfield, the Kmart car, now lap down. So there are 15 cars now on the lead lap. Three, 24, 88, 6. Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin. As we see Kyle Petty slow on the apron of the racetrack. Let the field go by here. You see where your favorite driver is running on the racetrack. Who he's racing with. Here come the leaders once again. Gordon was clear of traffic that time. Had a good uh, speed as he came to the line. Steve Grissom also had a good speed there, too, and Dick Trickle, and look at Bobby Labonte. He was over 111. But there again, it depends on how you were in traffic. That's a great deal to do with this lap that you might have turned. 
There comes Steve Grissom, that white car right behind Rusty Wallace, and he goes by. Rusty, Rusty Wallace appears to be off the base. Or he is slow. I, I believe the chance has gone away on his car, Benny. He's, he's, he was charging towards the front for a while, but now that the tires are getting old, I don't believe that his Miller Ford's handling quite as good as he was. Bill Weber? Right on it, Ned. His car is entirely too tight. I asked Robin Pemberton, and he didn't have to be able to hear him down here. Of course, you can't hear him anyway. But he just said that Rusty is too tight. He's going to try and hang on. They're looking at the end of their fuel window here in a little while, too, so they're going to try and hang on to that. And Rusty's literally hanging on. And by the way, update on Jimmy Spencer. It was an ignition wire that fell off. They reconnected it. They're putting the hood pins back in, and Spencer will return to the race, but he will contend for the win. And now a battle for second position as Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett are nose to tail. He's carved it out. And Mark takes second. Mark Martin moving to second spot. He's carved it out there a little over 125 laps now. So we'll see how far these cars can run on fuel and tires. Mark Martin has five top five finishes in the last six races here at Bristol as another Napa Field summary will show you where everybody's running. Jeff Burton got caught up in that heavy traffic that we saw the leaders go through and he didn't get through it quite as good as the others. So as a result, the leaders have driven away from him. Sorry, Bob and Jeff Gordon, folks, trying to get by. Put him a lap down. Thought he was going to get it done, but didn't. Earnhardt, again, using that high line, but it's working for him. It is. He has good momentum coming off yep. the turn. And traffic is certainly no problem for him. Okay. Passes Dan Musgrave. He's just running two lanes higher than everybody else. Watch this. Jimmy Spencer's car goes back on the racetrack. We're almost to the 200 lap mark. Spencer is 31 laps down. We talked about Rusty Walsh's car being a little tight. I want to see. See the left front tire? There's no yellow marking. And the right rear tire, there's no yellow marking. Those two tires, the race car works crossways. The right and rear, the left front work together. The, the tires look like the car is really loose. See, the left front has no yellow marking on it, and the right rear has no yellow marking, like the car is really, really loose, but he reported it tight. Bill Elliott is in the pits, John Kernan. And it's a four tire change plus a track bar adjustment for Bill Elliott. Remember, he just went a lap down a few laps ago. This is a scheduled pit stop, so we should be seeing more pit stops forthcoming in the next few laps. But a four tire change for Elliott and a track bar adjustment. So Bill Elliott rolls back onto the racetrack. Staying on the apron until the car gains some speed, then pulling up onto the concrete. I tell you what, those new tires will help because the 29 car, Jeff Green, just passed Jeff Gordon, the leader, and just passed Dale Earnhardt with those fresh tires. Dale Earnhardt stays on the lead lap in the 14th position as Jeff Gordon has not been able to put him down a lap. The 29 car of uh, Jeff Green did just come out of the pits a long ago. He was four laps down. He's just three now. And he's past Jeff Gordon. There's Sterling Marlin. They're coming up on. Sterling is running in the 13th position. Green flag pit stops are about to happen. Uh, Bill Elliott has made one, and everybody else will need one before long. So we'll take a break and be back for those at Bristol. Bristol, where Mark Martin now has taken over the lead from Jeff Gordon. That's important because it gives him the five bonus points in his battle for the championship with Burton and uh, with Gordon, rather. And here's how Mark went into the lead. Comes off the second corner. Jeff Gordon goes up the hill. Mark Martin just turned on him, accelerated by. 
And we have several cars that have made pit stops. Here's Jeremy Mayfield in for a stop. Got him a chassis adjustment, changing four tires. You see he's been in a little bit of a skirmish there with somebody as we see a little damage there on the, the door with that Kmart machine. His service is finished and he stays under the speed limit. Well, we'll see if Mark Martin can put Dale Earnhardt a lap down. Jeff Gordon had considerable difficulty. And there's two cars right in front of them. The seven car, Jeff Bodine's in the pit. Bill Weber. This is your fourth place car. Green flag stop, 215 laps in the book. Right side tires. Now we'll come around to the left side. Try and fill it with as much fuel as possible. Extra man across the wall to clean the windshield. Fuel is in, waiting on the bus. And Bill, now big rack, big rack. Dick Trickle sideways up in the uh, fourth corner, but everybody else is going to get by okay, I guess. The caution is out, however. The caution is out, and Earnhardt saves his lap. And a tough break for Jeff Bodine, being in the pits on the jack when that green the yellow flag comes out. Probably lost a couple of laps, at least one. Yeah, he had moved up to fourth position and was looking good. This is what happened up in the uh, third and fourth turn areas. And we see Dick Trickle in the 36 car, and once again, the 36 bumped him going to the corner and tried to go to the outside of him, just clipped him on the right rear, and Dale Jarrett stops in the corner. I don't know if there's some contact between him and the 75 or not. I don't know. I think Mask got slowed down. He might have hit him just a little bit, but not very much, but they were both very fortunate there. It's our fifth caution of the evening, and it comes out on lap 217. Dick Trickle. And the bad news is Dick Trickle lost a lap when he spun up there. So now just... 12 cars on the lead lap. And the scoring is showing Jeff Bodine two laps down. What a tough break for him. Pit road is open. Here come those on the lead lap. Led by Martin, followed closely by Gordon, and then Jarrett. Here's Bill Weber. Jeff Burton brings his X side forward into the pits. This will be four tires and fuel and in the windshield. His car has been a little bit tight. So they'll make a chassis adjustment on the right side. Now they come around, loosen the lugs on the left side. Now down the road to Jerry Punch. Jim Thorpe was complaining of a push, middle of the turn, and loose coming off. He is out of the way. And Thornton is out. Neil Jarrett is out. His car was very, very loose and getting looser. DJ was coming in the next lap as we go into the back pits of John Kerner. Steve Grissom running fifth at the time as Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, and Mark Martin uh, make their way back down the back straightaway. It'll be a four-tire change for Grissom. The car is running really well. No chassis adjustments, but he's going to lose spots on the racetrack just by virtue of fitting here on the backstretch. Track position so important, but Steve is going to lose a lot of it by pinning on the backstretch. Right along with the leader, Mark Martin, he goes in the corner. And there was your triple right in front of me, nails the gas, and man, am I glad I got by that. Now from the copter cam, the Pennzoil copter cam. Right here, you're going to see the contact between the 36 and the 90. Just slight contact, and all the cars take evasive action. And that there was a little contact there between uh, Dale Jarrett and whoever else was up there high on the racetrack. Rick Mast. Down to John Kernan again. Well, Bob, we told you a little bit earlier that Ernie Irvin had a piece of brake rotor go, is off the crew thought, went through the radiator. Actually, when they pulled the radiator out, this is what they found. This piece of pipe went through, punctured the radiator. Ernie lost all the water. They are currently still behind the wall trying to get the car fixed to see if they can get back out there. But there may have been too much damage done to the engine. Ernie Irvin's night may be over. That is a header pipe coming off the head down to the exhaust pipe, tailpipe. There's the overhead view of Bristol Motor Speedway, courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam, under caution with 220 of the 500 laps completed. Back in just a moment. 216, Ned. Nick Trickle gets tapped from the rear right there, and around, no, right there is when he gets tapped the second time, and around he goes, right in front of the leaders. And the caution comes out. Trickle does not get hit again, but he does go a lap down. And we are about to go green again. Jeff Gordon won the race out of the pits and is at the front of the field once again with Jarrett second, then Martin. Ready. Go, 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 go. 
he'll be two laps down when we come back across the start finish line. He's going to try to get one of those back here right now. is in ninth position. And again, he fought so hard to stay on the lead lap, and it has paid off. John Kernan has an update on Dale. Bob, on this pit stop, they took advantage to make a chassis adjustment, a half turn and left rear, tightening the car up. And then Earnhardt, sitting here in the back, that's Mary Labonte is sitting on the front, managed to beat him to the line down here as they exit the back stretch. That's why Dale Earnhardt has moved up into the top ten. But a great pit stop for them back here, even though they were making an adjustment. His very first NASCAR Winston Cup win came here in April of 1979. He has won eight times on this racetrack, five in the spring race and three in the fall race or the night race. Rusty Wallace won his first race on this track. Ernie Irvin won his first Winston Cup race on this track. And yep. Earnhardt won one of the toughest tracks on the circuit. Here's Labonte trying to put Dale back to 10th and doing so. Jerry Punch has an update on the four car of Sterling Marlin, which is a lap down now in 14th. Jerry? Well, Bob, he actually made three pit stops during that caution. If I came in the first time to take a rubber out and actually got a lap back up on the field, and NASCAR called him back in and got their lap back that he had taken on that quick stop and go to pull the rubber. He came in twice more to change two tires each time, and now he is back on the racetrack. Sterling Marlin as he goes by Johnny Benson. As you have the field summary, you can see all the cars currently on the racetrack and laps behind. Jeff Gordon has led 175 laps so far. Dale Jarrett has led 28. Spencer 11, Martin 10, and Jeff Burton 7. So Gordon is moving up on the uh, clinching the five extra points for leading the most laps. And I guess you have to learn how to race here, don't you? In the first four Bristol races, Jeff Gordon's average finish was 23rd. In the last five Bristol races, his average finish, second. Well, he learned quick, didn't he? <laughs> We're going to show you speeds the line this time by and we'll see that Jeff Gordon with fresh tires and clean racetrack in front of him almost 116 miles per hour of course that five mile per hour gain then yeah was what he was running there earlier 110 11 before still over 115 Jarrett trying the outside now on Jeff Bodine. And look, Rusty Wallace has caught Mark Martin. Debris on the track. Caution comes out for the sixth time. Gordon did take the caution as he came by that time, so he slows down the backstretch, and Jeff Bodine will not get one of his two laps back. It's the sixth caution of the evening. It comes out on lap number 238. We'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment and in a strong fourth position in the last 35 short track races. He has 13 wins, has finished either first or second in 60% of the events, and his average finish fifth. Bill Weber. And in happy hour here, Rusty was thrilled with his car. We get the one-to-go signal, but his car got too tight, as you'll recall, before that last pit stop. They made an air pressure adjustment. One pound in the right front, one pound out of the right rear. 19.2 seconds. Rusty Wallace is flying. Good pit stop for track position to John Kernan. Well, Bill, Dale Earnhardt was running in the 10th position. There were only 11 cars on the lead lap, so he came down pit road, took on four tires, took a little pressure out of the left rear tire before he was able to pit. Dale said the car was better, but it was still tight in the center of the turn. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. 
All right, back here in the Sterling Marlin pit a moment ago, Larry McClure very, very upset. He was told that they had gotten a lap ahead of the field. That's why they were brought back in and held, and now they're being shown a lap down. And on that pit stop a moment ago, they were held at the end of pit road, so now they are two laps down. So McClure trying to plead his case as we go back to green flag racing. Green comes out on lap 244. Slides up the hill and loses the lead, oh, and he spins. And hits the inside wall hard, and so does Jeremy Mayfield. No caution. Now the out. caution's out. Yeah, they're sitting on the racetrack right there. Well, I wonder if something happened to Gordon's car before that spin, because he went up the hill, and I would guess there was some contact between him and Jeff Bodine. I haven't seen it yet or not, yet, but... We see some damage to the right rear. Jeff Bodine's on one of his left back. Well, there's a lot of uh, noise from the grandstand. <laughs> but this is what a short track can do to a points lead, and it looks like that Jeff is going behind the wall to make the repairs. Well, there's a good bit of damage on that right rear. I think that the rear housing will probably have to change the rear housing on that car. Remember, tough, tough, tough break. Next Sunday, Jeff Gordon goes for a million dollars at Darlington. The Winston Million up for grabs. 99 points were all that separated Jeff Gordon and second place Mark Martin coming into this event. Now Jeff is behind the wall and Mark Martin is running in second position. Wow, how quickly things can change. Here we go, down the front stretch. Let's see, Jeff Bodine trying to get a lap back. He's on the inside of Gordon. And right there, we can see they make slight contact. Up the hill goes Gordon. Now all these cars go by. We see the 37 car just on the right side of the picture on the front stretch. Oh, there we see. I'm sorry. The cars make contact coming off the second. That was the front stretch, wasn't no, it? No, that was second corner. Coming off the second corner. Okay, yeah, second corner. And he hits the wall on the inside. From Mark Martin's onboard camera. Stay off the gas <laughs> he sure did. There's the contact that sends Jeff and Jeremy. And watch this. Let's watch that. Oh, heavy contact with that right rear on the 24. Right on that right rear to hit that wall. And another angle from the copter cam. Same result. Jerry's with Jeff. All right, Jeff Gordon has climbed out of the uh, DuPont Chevrolet. And Jeffrey, first of all, uh, what happened out there? Well, you know, it's typical Bristol. Uh, it's just the way it goes with lap cars. They're fighting so hard to get back on the lead lap. And, you know, first of seven tried to knock me out. And then I, uh, you know, I don't know if I come down on him. He came into me. What happened? Uh, I got hit, you know, off of two. I don't know who it was. But uh, it's pretty bad. So uh, it's un unfortunate. You know, you think the best best place to be is up front it normally is except on those restarts those guys are wild how bad is the car i heard a lot of chatter on the radio with ray everton and the guys how bad does it hurt is the rear end housing uh it's it's hurt bad i mean it's pretty hard to wreck at this place and not hurt it bad and uh you know i tried to keep it out of the inside wall i knew it was going to be pretty tough to do that but uh i i just got a quick glance and you know right right rear's moved over pretty bad in it so we're probably going to need some trailing arms and I think I might have got the right front a little bit, too. All right, Jeff booked uh, Jeff Gordon out of the DuPont uh, Chevrolet as we check in with Bill Weber. And, Jerry, Jeff Bodine has come in twice, got right side tires, got some sheet metal pulled away, came in, got left side tires, put a little more sheet metal away, so picked up a lap there, got his four tires and fuel. He's been pretty quick most of the night and a little bad luck and maybe a little good luck coming his way. I have to wait and see what happens here down the stretch. So the cross flags are being shown. We are at the halfway point of this Goodies Headache Powder 500 here at Bristol. 
And now we turn our attention a little bit more toward the point situation. If points were awarded right now, Jeff Gordon would have a 13 point, make that a, yeah, 13 point uh, advantage on yeah, Mark ready. Martin. But every lap that go, 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 go. Point. Boy, look at Rusty Ball. The leader at halfway has won six of the 21 races so far in the 97 NASCAR Winston Cup season. Battle is for second spot. Rusty Wallace running third has nine top tens in the last ten races here at Bristol. Mark Martin has gone into the points lead. We have points for awarded right now. But they aren't, so you never know what might happen at the end of the race. We got almost 250 more laps to decide what happens here tonight. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. You heard Jeff Gordon tell you about the things the trailing arm may have been bent. Well, let me show you. This is the right rear trailing arm that's ordinarily fairly straight. It just came out from under the 24 car, completely bowed. This little bucket here is where the rear spring sits. Obviously, severe damage to the right rear of the car. They're trying to replace the trailing arm, and they are hoping the rear end is going to be okay so they can get Jeff out as quickly as possible. But meanwhile, the laps click off. Might also tell you that the 37 car of Jeremy Mayfield. Oh my goodness, the Big crash, of car upside down here on the main straightaway. Uh, keep going, keep going, it's here, keep green, going. I believe. And the, the, the track looks to be blocked. Well, there is one lane, and cars aren't going by there. There's Brett going on to the ball. Bobby Hamilton, Derek Cope. Hus Strickland gets going, Bobby Hamilton gets going again. Now there appears to be a fire on the 96 car. by the brake master cylinder on the car. Jerry Cope Skittles car is involved. The race has been red flagged. Here's what happened. Oh, a car. There's a car that's upside down. That's Cope, I mean, uh, David Green. That's upside down? Yeah. And another car sliding behind. You ever see David Green, the cat car, going off the corner, and Derek Cope loses control. He goes up, slams in the 96 car, hit hard blow to the wall. He gets up on his roof, slides down the racetrack, and somewhere about here, it's going to go back on its wheels. There it goes over and on its wheels. Listen and watch. So now the rescue crew is there at David Green's car. They're taking the windshield out. Well, John Kernan looks like Earnhardt has suffered some damage. Yeah, Earnhardt obviously ran into the back of someone. Uh, the, the steam has kind of settled down. Apparently all the water has come out of the car. A broken radiator. But, of course, with the red flag condition right now, the crew cannot work on the car. So Earnhardt sitting here on the back stretch was on the lead lap. Looked like he was going to pick up another top ten run. But right now, uh, that might not happen because he's got that uh, broken radiator. Well, the cars, of course, stopped where they were on the racetrack when the red came out. Bill Elliott was one of those that drove through the crash. Here's his in-car camera. And, folks, you can see about what Bill Elliott saw. Nothing. 
without major damage. Here's from the Pennzoil Copter Cam. There we see the 96 car, and folks, that I can't tell you how hard that blow was into the outside retaining wall, David Green. Pretty good contact with Bobby Hamilton and the 11 car. I believe Earnhardt hit the 11 car. It looked like that he might have hit him as he went through there. Now, once again, the 36 car, folks, stop it right there. If we could let it roll just inch forward, inch forward. The 36 car, this guy, watch as he loses control. Now, as he comes off the corner, he saves the car. He goes up, slams that 96 car, and boom, right in the outside retaining wall goes David Green. And there we see, you're right, Ned, the three car is running the back of Brett Bodine. Michael Walter spins down to the inside. 96 car is sliding along, along on its roof. About the time it stops, it's going to go back on, it's going to, I'm sorry, flip over and land on its wheels. So they continue to work down at the David Green car. There was work going on the 24 car, which had pulled in, of course, several laps ago, and they have informed the crew that they should stop work on that car also. That's one advantage because they're able to get their thoughts together now and get all the parts together that they'll need on the 24 car when they go back to work, make a better job of it. But yep. NASCAR rules do not allow you to work on a car during red flag conditions. Even if you have come in several laps before. So that's why the work has been stopped on Jeff Gordon's car. Well, we'll take a break here. We are under a red at the end of 258 laps because of a crash involving, among others, David Green. About to go get back ready, to get ready. Here we go. Here we go. Great flag. Great flag. Back on the racetrack, but he just blew up going off the second corner. A lot of smoke coming out of that car there. Is the uh, car that doesn't look like a Winston Cup car. No, it really doesn't. And he's going to be black flagged to the toe. Uh, Schrader and Mark Martin are running second and third. Looking back from Mark Martin to his teammate, Ted Musgrave, who is 17th, three laps down. Make that 16th, three laps down. Oh! oh almost oh. loses control. That's a couple of good saves. Skinner's had the game. He's, he's had that thing sideways several times. Right behind Skinner is fourth and fifth. Burton and Grissom.
seven car. Meanwhile, Dale Jarrett is pulling away from second place, Ken Schrader. But Schrader's having an awful good run here. Here's an on-track AutoZone interval report. Five laps, 283 to 287, and the interval grew from four-tenths of a second to a second and a half. Here is Bill Weber with a report on Jeff Bodine. Well, an interesting development down here in the pitch. Pat Trice, who's Jeff Bodine's crew chief, or was at the start of this race, just told me he quit. He put down his radio on top of the toolbox and walked away. He said he was unhappy with the way the orders were being handed out in the Bodine camp. Being made. He said, you can put it on the air. I quit. So in the middle of this race, a big dispute in this team, just about 10 days ago, they hired Tim Brewer as a consultant, a team manager role. So Bill Jack gets into Jeff Bodine, and Bodine spins. And the caution is out. Cars stack up behind, but... And we have a couple that also spun. Rick Mast, I believe, did. And another car that is still sideways down off the banking. And the 31 car of Mike Skinner was sparking badly that time by. And we see another car is... Like Lake Speed or somebody. I believe it's Ed Barry. Lake Speed is fun around in the corner down there. Here we go, going to turn three, and Dale Jerry goes in and just bumps the seven a little bit, enough to, around he goes. He nails the gas. Jarrett drives on the inside. Bodine does a great job to keep it off the wall, but, man, look at all that smoke, and the guys behind can't see a thing. <laughs> Break for Dick Trickle. He was out in front of the leader. He got back on the lead lap. There it is again, coming off the turn. Jarrett bumps him just a little bit. Jeff as you say, keeps his foot on the gas, makes a 360. Mark Martin gets by on the inside. And now from Mark Martin's in-car camera. And I saw the 31 car running the back of someone on that other, not that replay, but the one before. So, yes, Mike Skinner did knock the right front fender off on that. Mm -hmm. There you see the damage to the right front. in the racetrack. Terry Labonte's on pit road, Bill Weber. And they made some big chassis and air pressure adjustments just a few laps ago, but now Terry back in, getting four tires. They cleaned the windshield. They made another chassis adjustment, and he returns to the track. So Terry Labonte heads back out. And he drops a couple of positions, but will rejoin the race in ninth spot, the last car on the lead lap. Here comes Jeff Bodine. Down pit road. Also, Jeremy Mayfield. Bill is there again. Well, he's obviously going to need some tires. He's going to get four of them. We'll get a clean windshield and a drink. Don't need much fuel just to top it off because we had that lengthy caution just a few laps ago. Bodine has his right side tires. Now they come around, change the left sides, top it off with the fuel. So this team working very well despite uh, certainly an unusual circumstance here in the middle of the Goodies 500. Comes Dick Crickle uh, back on the lead lap, so he's going to come in and get some left side tires, it looks like. He came to the last time, changed right sides. This time, I was afraid he was going to get lapped, so he comes in this time, changed left sides. He will stay in the lead lap. John Kernan. And Bill Elliott's crew is finishing up a four tire change. Left sides going on. Adjustments on the car, but Bill Elliott is down in the way after service. Shown three laps down. He made a green flag pit stop way back yonder. Then a caution came out not long after that. So that's one reason that he's that far down. He got left one time on the racetrack, but I think the other two laps that he lost was when he made a green flag pit stop. And uh, the others were able to catch a caution. We're under our ninth caution flag of the evening. The 11 car of Brett Bodine has come from behind the wall to rejoin the race. We'll be back with more live coverage in just a moment. lap to go and we'll be back to racing dale jarrett is the leader with ken schrader running in second position jeff gordon remains behind the wall they're still working hard on that car here's what happened on lap 245 down in the corner make contact with jeremy mayfield boom back to the inside retaining wall 
And now Jeff Gordon drives back on the racetrack. He is being shown in 36th position. So he needs to make up some laps here. And uh, at the moment, he is second in the points. Bill Weber. Jeff Burton may have a problem with the ba battery to his radio. He can hear the crew, but they can't hear him very well. His car is a little tight. Green's out. Here we go again. Dale Jarrett gets a good jump on Kenny Schrader as Ken Musgrave jumps in between the first two. And now, so does Jimmy Spencer. And Mark Martin trying to get the inside of Schrader. Yes, he will. And here comes Jeff Burton. Oh, it happened so quickly. Schrader had to go high when Mark the inside of him, and both of them took it down again. Ken Schrader's best finish here at Bristol was second in April of 1994. This is his 26th race at Bristol. So now Mark Martin is second, and teammate Jeff Burton is third. First of all, a six, Bobby at Bobby seven. As you can see there, Terry at Bobby eight. We've got uh, nine cars. And we'll show you where everybody is running, not just the top ten. Grissom up from a third and fifth starting position. Remember, he's putting, putting on the back stretch, still staying up at the top five. Nine cars on the lead lap. Mark Martin goes by his other teammate, Ted Musgrave, so the three Roush cars right together. 6, 99 and 16. You guess they had a PR person down in that corner took a picture of that? <laughs> the 36 car of Jerry Colt, the Skittles, Pontiac, is back on the racetrack after repairs. Lots of repairs. Yeah. Just two cars being shown out of the race. Uh, David Green, of course, and Darrell Walter. Jeff, there's Jeff Gordon. He's 57 laps down. Went back out there, but now he's back in the pits. But Jeff Gordon, in just a few laps, is going to pick up one more spot because he's going to pass David Green, whose car is out of the race. Only three points. Yep. There is Jarrett. Continuing to lead here. So far, he has led 93 laps. Jeff Gordon has led 188. Steve Grissom running in fifth spot. And there's Rusty Wallace, the sixth place car. Steve Grissom had his career best finish at New Hampshire earlier this year. He finished fourth. He finished 32nd in the spring race here at Bristol and was not in last year's race here at night. In the 99 and the 18 that time, very fast. And Rusty Wallace also had a good lap. trickle. Uh, there were some of those cars that was involved in the traffic in one corner, so that can't make a difference. They did come in over 116 and the 41, 112 and a half. Four miles per hour slower that lap because of the traffic situation. And Rusty, Rusty, because he was passing someone last lap, picks it up considerably this lap. But Mark Martin was a little bit faster than Dale Jarrett that lap. And they were both pretty, pretty clean racetrack. And again, he's a little faster than Jarrett. And Jarrett had run it behind Michael Walk at that time. Now Jeff Gordon has come back in, Jerry. Well, I think the crew member could have gotten tendonitis. That was Ray Everett, and he must have put about seven or eight rounds of wedge in the car, but obviously he just threw the rear end back into the car. And they're just, just trying to get it close. All they want to do here now is survive these final 184 laps. The interval between Martin and Jared is closing. Well, it opened up a little bit on the last lap. In some traffic. We'll see what it is here at the line. It's about one and a half seconds last time, just a little less than that. This time. And you can see all nine 
cars on the lead lap are separated by a little over seven seconds. Things knocking off a little bit in the yes, every lap. Yes, he is. He sure is. it up for the night. He came back out and ran a few laps, but now behind the wall. And Steve Grissom, the 41 Kodiak car, has caught Spencer in the 33, the Skull car. That's Schrader, not Spencer. Oh, I know what you meant. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Michael Waltrip going up the hill as Rusty Wallace and Ted Musgrave get below him. These intervals vary because of where they are on the racetrack and who is near them. Martin has knocked a couple of tenths of a second off the interval here in the last five laps or so. Now here is Dale Jarrett completing another lap and he's 1.2 seconds ahead of Mark. There's another tenth of a second and Mark Mark closed in on him. Jeff Burton is coming with Mark Martin, so both those cars are gaining. Yep, they're right together. Sometimes they'll probably lose some time because Miller lost a tenth of a second passing that slower car. Come back to Bristol Motor Speedway. Our coverage continues of the Goodies Headache Powder 500. 324 of the 500 laps are completed. There are the top 10. ESPN Speed World tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee for the Goodies Headache Powder 500 being brought to you by. The XI NASCAR Select, so reliable, it's the official battery of NASCAR. And by Miller Lite, who reminds you that any time, anything can happen at Miller time. Rusty in the Miller Lite car is knocking on the door for fifth position. Steve Grissom got by, 33 car out Schrader, just a couple laps ago. Did it right this time. Schrader is in fifth position. Rusty trying to take it. Rusty is sixth. And Jeff Burton is right on the bumper of Mark Martin. Second Mark Martin and, and Jeff Burton have run across some traffic. When we had the break, they were about a second behind the leader, Dale Jarrett. Now, they're two and a quarter seconds behind. Now, Jarrett is in some heavy, heavy traffic up in front of them, so that'll probably let them gain some more back. Check the interval for you again. Last time back over just a little over two seconds. And this time it's a second and a third. So yes, that traffic is slowing Dale down now. But Mark and, and Jeff Burton have to go through that same traffic. They got through, through that part pretty good. But it slowed them down two tenths. And Burton uh, got up a little high on the racetrack exiting that corner and lost a little ground to Mark. And now Mark and Burton are big time traffic. The modified looking evil there, Brett Bonai. Traffic is moving over better now than they were earlier in the race. Mark Martin has 14 top 10 finishes in the last 15 races. That's since we raced here in April. Wow. That's why he's second in the points. Yep. Could be first after tonight. If points were awarded right now, Mark Martin would have an 11-point edge on Jeff Gordon and be in the points lead, and Dale Jarrett would gain 104 points and be 176 out of the lead. But we still got a lot of racing to oh, do. Yeah. Long way to go. 158 laps to go. Just what Bob was talking about just a moment ago. Points, if they were awarded now for the finishing position, 
Mark Martin would be 11 ahead of Jeff Gordon. Jarrett would just be 176 back. Terry Labonte would gain 70, and Jeff Burton would gain 94, and Ricky Rudd would move back into the top 10. He dropped out of the top 10 last week at Michigan, but would move back into the top 10 if points were awarded now. And I think that's the first time Ricky Rudd has been out of the top 10 since sometime back in 1995. Yep, that's right. 55 Since October of 1955, uh, 95 as a matter of fact, 55 races. Wow. And there's one of the fastest cars on the racetrack right now, Steve Grissom. He's a little over four seconds behind the leader. Steve finished 25th at Michigan last week. This is one of his best races in a long time. We've been doing intervals. Now we'll check speed at the line. Steve Grissom had a good clean lap that time. We'll see. Did he run 112? Ran 113. Yeah, he's faster than the leader. The fastest of anybody on the lead lap. There he is moving to the inside of Jeff Green in the 29 car. And that time, once again, faster than the leader, but not quite as fast as a 6 and 99. Twenty seventh in the points coming into this race was Steve Grissom. At this time last year, he was 39th in the points, and he's having a much better year in 1997 point wise than in 1996. There's the leader, Dale Jarrett with 150 laps to go here at the Goodies Headache Powder 500. We'll be right back. Has found a, a fire burning, and most people would think of warmth when they see the fire burning at this time of night. Benny is thinking about the hot dogs and the marshmallows that will probably be roasted in a few minutes. Now, let's see where that is in comparison to the racetrack. They don't have a very good seat, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Unless they're watching us. Yeah, maybe they are. <laughs> well, there we go. There's a racetrack. Wow. Well, we got more racing coming up for you on the Deuce tomorrow morning. 7.45, it's the Grand Prix of Belgium from Spa, Frankerschamp. And uh, Jacques Villeneuve has the poll for tomorrow's race. Live coverage at 7.45 Eastern time tomorrow morning over on the Deuce. Hey, guys, don't Mark. look now, but Mark Martin is coming. Dale Jarrett got behind John and Brady and can't get by him, and Mark Martin is coming quickly. Rusty Wallace goes in the corner, watches his head, leans over. And now he gets on straight away. His head comes back up straight. He goes in the corner. He'll lean that head again. And you do that a thousand times in this race, huh? Yeah, a thousand Thank times. And there's what I was talking about just a moment ago. It's less than a half second now, the interval between first and second, and look how the interval closed up with another AutoZone on-track interval report. And we can see that Jarrett had a good lap at the 17 flat. But look at Mark Martin. Three, zero, one, and a one. Very, very fast. And Michael Walter is in the wall. He missed the wall. I think he, he went in there high to let the leader go by. Uh, he got a little higher maybe than he meant to. There he goes high again so that Mark Martin can go by. And Steve Grissom is now down to three seconds behind the leader. Steve's running in fourth place. Now once again, Jared will come up on some traffic. There's still nine cars in the lead lap. Bobby Labonte is in ninth place. He's about 13 seconds behind the leader. Whoa. Mark goes to the inside of Ricky Rudd. There's a 99 car. Jeff Burton, the third place car. Steve Grissom, two and three quarter seconds behind. Folks, he's getting closer and closer. There he comes. The white number 41. Just a great run for this Alabama driver. And 
Mark Martin, just what, three car lengths behind Dale Jarrett. Got through all that traffic nicely and now has no cars between himself and Dale Jarrett. But they're coming up on both of them, coming up on some more lap traffic. Jarrett has 11 NASCAR Winston Cup career wins. All of them have come on super speedways, never a win on a short track. has 21 career wins. Go to the inside of Lake Speed. Who's up in 27th position. Eight laps down now. Lake Speed is. 132, 131 laps to go. We're going to have to make another pit stop, Benny. Yep. Before this thing's over. Now, which way do you go here? Okay, follow Chad Little in the green car. 78 car. Bradbury. He's probably helping Steve Grissom as they get into the traffic here. Right now, Steve Grissom's two and a half seconds behind the leaders. But they dispose of Chad Little. Well, Jerry does, now Mark does. Steve Grissom is. Thirteen and a half seconds separate the top nine. Those on the lead lap. From our copter can we see Steve Grissom still two and a half seconds. That's Ed Barrier in the 95 car who moves up a lane, allowing Dale Jarrett to pass by. Ed is in 26th position. Two and a third seconds now for the 41 car. So this thing is far from over. 100 and... 20-some laps to go as Dale Jarrett continues to set the pace at Bristol. Cool. All this has allowed Steve Grissom to get within a second and a quarter. Jeff, uh, Jeff Burton has caught right up to Mark Martin. Up Here's an AutoZone on-track interval report, laps 379 to 383, and Steve Grissom cut the interval from 2.4 to 1.8. Going to get hurt a little bit here now. He's behind uh, two cars running side by side. And you watch here on the upper left, there you can see it's still 1.84 seconds, separating first and fourth. Get hurt a little bit that time then with those cars side by side as he goes back to 1.8 seconds. Right with Mark Martin there. Now it's 2.2. You know, we talked in the very opening of the show, Ned. I think you were the person that mentioned the word patience. You're seeing it right here. I mean, not only on the part of uh, Mark Martin, who might be able to pass Dale Jarrett, but Jarrett also, who's just being patient and working his traffic as carefully as possible. Yeah, they're both displaying a lot of patience there, and that's good. That's what they need to do. Now look at Jeff Burton. Yeah, when there's this traffic, he caught right up to him, so Mark looks up in his mirror and sees his teammate. That white car right back there, that's Steve Grissom. So you gotta stay in that traffic. I'm coming on. Bill Garrett having a little trouble getting around Mike Skinner. There's Grissom. And that time, less than a second. And he's got clear track up there to him. And the leader's being held up.
Parsons must have been a pretty patient driver here at Bristol because if you look over the last 25 years, OBP has the second best finishing average of any driver. Really? Yeah, the first is Cale Yarborough. He's an average finish of 6.6, .6, but OBP had a 7.5, and Dale Earnhardt is next with an 8.3. Well, that's good. Yeah, that was a... Ooh! patient driver. Mark got a little loose there, didn't he? Yes, he did. Coming off that corner. And look there, the first four cars, no to tell. Yep. We don't have to measure it in seconds anymore. We can measure it in feet. And Mark takes a look. Just, let, he just went down there to let Dale Jarrett know that, yeah, I'm there. In case you slip, I'm going by you. <laughs> I want you to know that. Oh, whoa! Hamilton spinning. And Dale Jarrett spins as well, didn't he? No, he didn't spin. He almost did, but Jeff Burton took the lead. Now Mark Martin takes the lead. No caution. No, no caution. caution. So Mark Martin has gone into the lead. Burton is second, and Jarrett back to third, and he's got his hands full with Grissom. Take a look and see what happens. You come off the corner. Here we see Jarrett on the inside of the 43 car to go up and right there makes contact with the 43. Around he goes. And I thought that Dale had spun, but we can see three abreast for a second going in one. And Jeff Burton dove to the outside, took the lead, but he was so high he couldn't get back down to the groove. Now Steve Grissom has gotten around Dale Jarrett. And you'd have to wonder if he's concerned about that right front fender damage on his number 88 car. Take a look at that from Mark Martin's in-car camera. Boy, he's dodged several bullets tonight, hasn't he? Boy, he has, hasn't he? And that's exactly what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve Grissom now is in third with Jared back to fourth. And we have 100 laps to go. That's about... Well, it's less than a half hour of racing, so we're getting down to it here. More cars running nose to tail on the Goodies Headache Powder 500. Where do for Mark Martin? His onboard camera has caught him in several situations that he just has barely gotten through. There's the Jeff Gordon crash that he was able to get by. Another spin up ahead that he drives through a lot of smoke and comes through unscathed. And now this most recent one that sent Bobby Hamilton spinning down the backstretch. All of this at Bristol Motor Speedway where the caution is out once again. It just came out. It's our 10th of the evening. And it's because the 78 car of Gary Bradbury is up against the wall. Turn number four. Jerry Punch had just reported to us during the break that Jarrett was thinking about coming in pretty soon. Now we have the opportunity to, Jerry. Exactly, Bob. Huge break for Dale Jarrett. They were concerned about the toe in in the front of the car number 88 as well as possibly a fender rubbing on the right front. They were going to bring him in in about lap uh, 410, which will be one lap from now. But now the caution comes out and he will be able to make the pit stop and they can take their time taking a look at the front of his car number 88. Meanwhile, everyone else will come on pit road for what should be their final pit stop at 35 miles an hour. Pits are open as we check in uh, Bill Weber in the 99 pit. Jeff Burton could have gone to lap 450. He doesn't have to wait that long now. This should be his final stop. Four tires and fuel, and they will make a track bar adjustment that they've been talking about for many, many laps. Right side tires going on. They make the track bar adjustment. Come around to the left side as you look at the 699 and the 88. Not the punch. Likewise, chassis adjustment. They're trying to tighten up the car number six and the 88. They made an air pressure change to make Dale Jarrett's car a little bit tighter. The 99 is down. The six is down. The 88 are down. Did they rush back to turn one? Let's check in with John Turner. Steve Grissom is in. They're putting the left side tires on the car. No changes. Remember, his car is a little tight at the beginning of the run, so they need the final 90 laps of this race to be run under the green, and then they think they're going to be in pretty good shape because, as you saw just a little while ago, after they get some laps on the car and the fuel load lightens and the air pressure builds up in the tires, that car is like a rocket ship. There is the 88 car of... Dale Jarrett, who beat 
Mark Martin out of the pits, we believe, and so we'll be at the front of the field, although the six is in ahead of Jarrett at the moment. But it did look like they beat him out of the pits. We'll show that here. Here they are in the pits. Here white line. This is the white line that they've got to get to. You see the 88 car moving? You see the six car moving? And man, is it close. <laughs> Very close. But I think Dale Jarrett did beat him by about a foot. And evidently someone, evidently someone saw a replay. <laughs> So Jarrett moves to the front as the 10th caution waves over Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be right back. Martin has been put back in front of the 88 of Dale Jarrett. Now, we told you about the 7 car of Jeff Bodine. He is currently running in 10th position, a lap down. Let's get more on this situation regarding Pat Trison with Bill. And I'm back here in the garage area with Pat Trison, and uh, obviously an emotional night for you, but you've decided at this point the team isn't the place for you. Yeah, I guess it's really been building up over the last couple of weeks with the restructuring of the owners, the, the, what they did. They brought Tim in, and, you know, Tim's the crew chief general manager, and it was just creating confusion on our radio with two, three people trying to talk at once. Uh, I was told that he wanted to talk to the driver, and so basically I guess that meant that I wasn't supposed to, and I was the crew chief. I felt like it was my job to talk to the driver, and I just felt like, well, this isn't going to work, so there's no sense going on. I'll let him take over and let him do it. I'll just go find me somewhere where they appreciate me and would like me to be a part of it. Obviously, a, a difficult decision when you came over here to take this crew chief job, a good opportunity for you at the time, and you've been through this battle to help Jeff through these difficult times. I felt like I've done a real good job. I'm not sure it's really been appreciated. We had fast cars everywhere. We had a lot of motor problems, so not everybody knew how good our cars were everywhere, but I don't have any bad feelings toward Jeff Bodine. He's a great guy and a great driver, and I thank him for everything he's done for me and maybe someday we can work together again. Good luck to you. Thank you. That's Pat Trice, and he's got a real good resume. We're back to racing. Jeff is in the seven car and is trying to get back on the lead lap. And I think he's going to do it. Yeah. Got by Mark Martin. And, and here comes Dale J. So we now have 10 cars on the lead lap as Jeff Bodine goes back on the lead lap. And don't forget Rusty Wallace. He's in third place now. He just passed the 99 car. Jeff Burton takes over that spot. top of the show passing at this racetrack is difficult but he also said maybe that's what it ought to be <laughs> yeah i think you, you ought to have to work for a pass it's certainly you have to do that here but sometimes it does get frustrating if you got a fast race car faster than the one in front of you but yet you can't pass it Crash, turn one. Wow, hard hit by the 31 car and easy guys, easy guys, easy. Bodine gets his lap back. A lot of debris down in this corner. Good thing those brakes work good. Wally Dollenback is the other car involved in this. Look at all that debris there to puncture these tires. all over the racetrack. So now, now 10 cars back in the lead lap because this fella, Jeff Bodine, did it. 
and he's been a fast race car. And one of the fastest all evening. Now we'll see what he can do. But now uh, Wally Dallenbach begins to move away, but Mike Skinner is still at the bottom of the racetrack in turn number one, and this brings out yet another caution on Bristol Motor Speedway. Here at Bristol, down in turn one, Mike Skinner's car was heavily damaged before the crash, and now it is really damaged. Now, he was carried from the car to the ambulance. He appeared to be in some pain. Uh, we assume maybe it's a... Uh, leg injury or an ankle injury of some kind but anyway he's in the ambulance and will be taken to the infield medical center and he was talking to yes. the attendants as they were carrying him to the ambulance he actually got out of the car himself he unbuckled and sat on the car on the window of the car and then they carried him over to the ambulance this is what happened it came on lap 424 and it was down in turn number one Contact. Wow. Boy, he hit hard, didn't he? Several times. Now from Hut Strickland's on board. So Dollar back slid into Hut, huh? Great look. Yep, sure did. And look at all the debris down on the racetrack. It's a tremendous amount of debris. Yeah, Dallenbach was trying to get slowed and just spun sideways and hit the Hutt Strickland car. Now, why, why caused Mike Skinner to go? It's almost like a rear tire went flat as he came off that corner. So, under caution, once again, this is the 11th time tonight that the caution is waived with 428 laps completed. Tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway for the Goodies Headache Powder 500. We've had a crash up in turn number one. Mike Skinner, Wally Dallenbach, and others involved. Now watch this uh, crash in real time and see how violent it is. Bam! Just incredible contact. You know, Earnhardt hit him as he went by. Did he? I do believe Earnhardt. Watch and listen. It's been a tough night for rookies. Mike Skinner is now out of the race. Robbie Gordon did not start, didn't qualify for the event. David Green rolled down the front straightaway. He's out, and Jeff Green is currently running in 21st position. Ken Schrader makes the pit stop. He's one of the lead lap cars. And also the seven car of Jeff Bodine, who just got back on the lead lap, will come in. Bill? Well, Jeff Bodine has scratched the clone his way back into this thing with under 70 laps to go. Now he has nothing to lose by coming in and getting four fresh tires, a clean windshield, will clean the grill, top him off with fuel, he doesn't even need that. He's going with two tires right now, come back to get two more. John Kernan. Bobby Labonte is in some contact front there. What they're doing underneath the hood right now, three rounds. On each side, that's raising the car up about a quarter of an inch. The, uh, when they go through the turns, the, the, the nose was dragging, so they had to raise it up. The hood will go back down. Uh, he will leave pit road this time. Then he should come back on pit road and put on four fresh tires. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, the discussion is ongoing between Steve Meal and Mark Martin as to what could happen on the restart. Mark's big concern is this. The car number 23, which is a lap down or not on the lead lap, jumping the restart or getting a good start on the restart and possibly getting around Mark and holding Mark up, which would set him up possibly to be passed for the lead. We check back in with Bill Weber. And Jeff's back for two left side tires. He's on his way with four tires, and, uh, you know, he's a threat here now. So Jeff Bodine leads, leaves the pits, heads back out as Mark Martin leads here at Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be right back. And Jeff Burton. Green comes out. And this time, Jimmy Spencer, remember the last time, got the good jump. This time, he backs off and lets the guys go up and battle for the lead. Ooh, had a little bit of contact there with Steve Grissom. Grissom running in fifth place. There he gets on by. Carry the body of six.
gentleman Jimmy Spencer won the Bush Series race last night here at Bristol and has a gentlemanly gesture here this evening. The gentleman term was what Jerry Punch labeled him with last night. On board with Rusty Wallace. Third place runner. That's Dale Jarrett in front of him, the second place car, and Mark Martin, the leader. There's the top three. And that's Jeff Burton. Right on the back bumper of Mark Martin. Mark Martin's getting off the turn two over there very well, Jimmy. He's big, big car coming off that turn. We got less than 60 laps to go. That time he did change, I think. There's the Wallace sitting right there in third, watching that battle up front. And for those of you who tuned in for Sports Center, stay with us because Sports Center will be coming up at the conclusion of our race. And we have less than 60 laps to go. 56, as a matter of fact. And Bill is with Mike Skinner. Mike, out of the infield care center, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I just, I banged my knee on the steering column real hard and uh, hit my head on the bar. But my head's all right. My knee's a little bit sore. But, you know, I, I hate it for Lowe's. We had a good run, pretty good run going. We got motioned by on the left side by some cars that was a lot further down than we were. We were only a lap down, and we took advantage of it, and NASCAR penalized us for it. And this is kind of a rough deal, but the uh, car was running pretty good, and I guess someone tagged us from behind there. You know, I'm sure it was accidental. It just one of them racing deals. Racing pretty tight here at Bristol. I love this place. I can't wait to come back. Okay, and he'll be back next time, and he'll be back next week at Darlington. Boy, after being through what he went through, and he says he can't wait to get back here. Hmm. Maybe he hasn't seen the tape yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad, Mike. Believe me. <laughs> and Rusty Wallace closed up on the back bumper of Dale Jarrett. Right now, Mark Martin putting a few car lengths on that second place car. Rusty tries to get on alongside as he goes by the floor car of this area. Now they all three have a little bit of open running room there before they get to the full lap track. Last year in this race, Rusty led 353 laps, and in the spring he led 240. Now here's a battle between the 33 and the 90, Trickle and Schrader. They're back and forth. Trickle has seven. And Schrader is on the outside, and now he has seven. That's a good pass by Schrader on the outside. Yep. Remember, Schrader came in and uh, took on some tires, I believe, during that caution period. Ooh, Spencer dives in the corner. Spencer's got a very fast race car. Just had some problems, many laps down. Remember, Jeff Bodine got back on the lead lap when the caution came out most recently. There is Jeff. He's up to ninth now. Bobby Labonte is running tenth. Jeff Bodine's about a half a lap down now. He's seven and one tenth seconds behind the leader. Boy, Rusty. Got passed right then by Jeff Burton. It looked like he slipped a little bit coming off turn two. Burton caught up to him, and now Rusty is definitely going a little bit slower than he was. Jeff Bodine hasn't led. He started 15th. 
has been as low as 28th and has been as high as fourth right now in ninth. And Steve Grissom has been caught by Terry Labonte. Well, Terry just hangs in there all night long and uh, been in the top ten for a long time. Ken Schrader, he's coming up on both of them. He has those fresh tires. Well, Rusty, uh, you mentioned that Rusty uh, was not quite as fast as he was. Word is he may have a tire going down, Bill. That's what they're thinking. This crew just leaped onto the wall. Rusty went by the first time. They're waiting to see if he's coming in. Yeah, he's going to make the hard left. Just scoot right on down here to pick road. They think it's the right rear. And so they go around to the right side. This is heartbreaking for this team. They've had so much bad luck this season. Here, one of his favorite tracks there is a chance to win. He's already fallen off the lead lap. Two right sides, Rusty back out. I told him this thing to rip your heart out. Oh, that is a tough break. In the last 10 Bristol races, Rusty leads in the categories of most points scored, most wins, most top 10s, most lap led, and he has the best average finish of 5.2, but now goes a lap down. And Rusty coming back in the pit. Yep. Apparently must have been a left side tire instead of the right. Still? Yep, now they're going to do the left side, so... So, like I said, no luck at all. They thought it was the right side. They pulled them right rear. So now they got left sides on. Rusty's got four tires. And uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. He'll be on the track, but he won't be in the race. Well, when it rains, it pours. So now Rusty Walsh is two laps down. A reminder coming up next is Sports Center here on ESPN as the guys catch you up on everything that's going on in the world of Sports right after the conclusion of this race. We'll have reports on the Yankees Mariners, the college football opener, and the World Series of Golf. All that coming up next on Sports Center. Wow, there were some cars slipping and sliding. Jeff Burton almost spun out about three or four laps ago, coming off the of turn two. He was gaining on the leaders. Terry Labonte did the same as well. You ever see Mark Mark coming off? No, they ever see Jeff Burton. Oh, baby, hang on, hang on. Good job. Yeah, no kidding. And Terry Labonte did the same thing, the same spot. Yeah, there must be some oil out there. The report was that possibly Jeff Gordon was laying down some oil. By the way, Jeff is back in 36th position. He crashed earlier in the race and made repairs and has been out there, but not moving up very quickly. Jeff is coming in. 127 laps down. We have an interesting situation here because Jeff Gordon led 188 laps and Dale Jarrett with the lap that he just led has led 180. So Jarrett only needs nine more laps and he will take off home the five bonus points for leading the most laps here this evening. Well, he's probably going to get three or four of those here at least under, under caution. caution. Yeah. Depends on how long it takes him to oil the track down and clean it up. Terry Labonte coming into the pits along with Dick Trickle. Two drivers on the lead lap shown in fifth and sixth. They come in for a pit stop. Well, again, we remind you that next Sunday... Jeff Gordon will be going for the Winston Million at the Mountain Dew Southern 500. And we will be there to see if it happens. Live and in color. And here is how Dale Jarrett got into the lead. This is turns one and two. They go down the back stretch, side by side. Into turn three, Martin a little bit ahead. But, and here, Dale Jarrett just goes up the racetrack. Some contact there between the two. Martin tried to dive back under it. But the cut of the caution flag, Jarrett is in front. Elliott was a little bit sideways there in front of those two. So they put down some oil dry on the racetrack and get up that moisture. And Steve Grissom came in on the back stretch and put on four tires, so he's going to be in good shape for this restart. There'll probably be about 20 some laps to go when we get the restart. There are 27 to go right now. Well, our coverage at Darlington begins Friday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time on the news. That's qualifying. Then Saturday, the Duraloo 200 Bush Series race at 5 here on ESPN. 
the Deuce has the happy hour at 9 o'clock in the evening. And then Sunday, NASCAR Today is at 12.30 over on ESPN2. And our live coverage of the Mountain Dew Southern 500 and Jeff Gordon's quest for the Winston Million begins at 1 o'clock. We'll take another break here and be back in just a moment with more of the goodies heading out. Bristol Motor Speedway. And the overhead shot is courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam. You can see that the field is running at reduced speed. They're running at about 36, 37 miles an hour, getting set to go back to green. And there's only 124,925 people here because I've seen 75 people leave. I can't believe it, but I saw <laughs> 75 people leave. John Kernan? Steve Grissom was running in the four spot, came in, pitted for four tires. He's dropped back to seven. Crew Chief Charlie Presley tells me, I think that's our best shot at victory. Remember, his car uh, was a little tight on the first part of a run, so what they did was they added air pressure to the tires, so it won't take as many laps for his tires to come in. They think they got a good shot at winning this race. Let's go to Bill Weber. Left rear tire that they just took off of Rusty Wallace's Miller Lite Ford. Plenty of air in it. It's not flat, but look here. These are the lug nut holes. They're out of ground. This tire was vibrating severely. You can see how this has been worn away. It's no longer round. Severe vibration. You can see right here the marks that Rusty was feeling from the vibration of this tire. So it was the left rear tire with the lugs going away that brought Rusty Wallace into the pits and took him out of contention. Dr. Punch. Well, Dick Trickles, and he made the call himself to come in this time with the Heiling Myers Ford. Dick said, you know, I've won about a 1,000 races just like this. 30-lap shootout on a Saturday night under the lights. Put me four fresh tires on, guys, and I might have a shot at 1,001. Getting ready to go green. They might do it. This they is have Terry Labonte. Yeah, Terry Labonte also stopped and took on four tires, so you got uh, three cars out there to stop. Here we go. Here we go. He has uh, new tires, too, but apparently uh, let him go. Now two laps down, he was three. Belger, ten bonus points, he'll get five extra for leading the most laps. That lap clinched it. It's the seventh time this season that Dale Jarrett has led the most laps. Ward Burton trying to pass Mark Martin. Ward is uh, 17th, four laps down. Mark doesn't need that. <laughs> he doesn't need a car between him and the leader. This is the battle for sixth position. Trickle with those new tires passes Bobby Lavani. And Ward Burton does pass Mark Martin. Steve Grissom passed uh, Labonte just a couple laps ago. There are Mark Martin and Jeff Burton running second and third behind Jarrett. And Mark's car, he's having trouble getting the thing up to speed. He really is. And then he had slowed just a little bit. We thought it was because of the grease on the track. But Jarrett had run him down and then got by him just as the caution was coming out. So don't know if anything was going wrong with Mark's car there. Or we thought it was the oil on the racetrack and just being careful. So I don't know. If you've tuned in for Sports Center, stay with us because as soon as our race is over and as soon as we can get a quick comment from the winner, we'll switch you to Bristol, Connecticut, and all the sports news on Sports Center. Here's uh, Kent Schrader in the 33 car coming up on Jeff Burton. Now he has fresher tires than the 99 car of Jeff Burton. And there's Steve Bristol, the 41 car with four fresh tires. And Dick Trickle is coming in right behind him. Schrader is uh, in his best run of 1997. His best finish this year was sixth at Dover, and he's currently running fourth. Now, Ward Burton is one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Remember, he passed Mark Martin not long ago? Well, he has caught Dale Jarrett now, and uh, might pass him, even though he's been several laps down, as you pointed out, Bob. But he is fast. I think 41 car right now is the fastest car on the racetrack, but he's never going to get to show it because he just can't get through the traffic. And the 22 car board Burton does go around Jerry. Just one of his laps back. And Jerry just has 12 laps to go. Oh, look at this. Whoa, contact between Schrader and Burton. Back to third place. 
good old Saturday night short track racing, and it will be at its best here in the next 12 laps as everybody tries to gain one more spot. Here's Jeff Bodine and Terry Labonte side by side, and look at this. Grissom takes a spot away. Here comes Trickle and some smoke. The right front tire when he made contact with Burton a moment ago. The fender is rubbing the tire. Wow, can he make it another 10 and a half laps? So now, mm. yeah, it's looking pretty bad, isn't it? It is, boy. You got to look up there at that. And you, know, you know how hard these walls are here in Bristol. You don't want to cut a tire down, but hey, at the end of the race, you got to keep going. Grissom there in the 41 car has moved up to fourth spot. And Labonte and Bodine are still going at it for eighth position. And Dick Trick was caught the 41 car of Grissom. And I said Grissom might be the fastest car. Trick reminds me. It might be. They're running fourth and fifth. about that Saturday night shootout. He knows how to do them. He's on his best run of 97. Dick Trickle is his best finish was 11th at Bristol earlier this year. And Terry Labonte has just passed Jeff Bonine and gone into eighth. Meanwhile, no problems for Dale Jarrett as his lead is a second and a half over Mark Martin. And in terms of interval on the track, there it is. Mark, you played in a little bit about five laps ago, Bob, but got in some traffic. And Jarrett was able to open it up again. That last lap, Mark Martin was much faster than Dale Jarrett, but there's just too much ground to make up. There we see. Mark Martin knows that he's going to go away with the point lead here tonight. He doesn't want to take any chance. He'd like to win this race, but one thing he wants to do, and that's the thing and finish in second place if not first. Unofficially, the interval between first and second, Mark Martin and Jim Gordon points-wise would be 13 as they go to Darlington. And Terry Labonte just passed Bobby Labonte to go into seventh, and here's Trickle and Jeff Burton now. Trickle goes, tries to go into third spot. He may have it here down to the corner. Yep. Boy, Trickle is just flying. Luke Trickle is the third spot. Good run for Dick Trickle. Juni Don Leather must be beside himself. The white flag. One more lap to go. The white flag is showing. Mark Martin is closing in. He's reduced the interval to eight tenths of a second, but it may not be enough. Here's the final lap as Dale Jarrett is in corner number four. Off the corner. Mark is there. But Jarrett wins by just a car length, his 12th career win, and his very first NASCAR Winston Cup victory on a short track. His fourth win of 97, Bill Weber. And Todd was there. Todd Parrott is on top of the box talking to his driver. Congratulations, Dale Jarrett wins on a short track. What's that? I said you won. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, man. We had a great race car. And we got a great race team. You know, and, uh, my hat's off to him. I just got to thank Big Lord for a safe race and one heck of a race car driver. And I'd like to say hello to Debbie and Tyler back home. Love you guys. Great. And the party's at DJ's Diner. It opens at 6 a.m. Monday morning. Don't be late. <laughs> But Mark Martin, because of his second place finish, goes into the points lead for the first time since 1990. We're going to stay and get a word with Dale Jarrett before we switch you to Sports Center. What a grueling and tough race this has been, and the 125,000 who gathered here tonight definitely got their money's worth. And when we come back in the spring, there'll be 131,000 seats available, and every one of them will be sold and occupied. So Jarrett finds victory lane here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Almost had a wreck trying to get to victory lane as Jeremy Mayfield comes through there. It's a 14th win for Ford this season. Let's take a look at the unofficial results. The arrows, yellow arrows, indicate those who led a lap, and of course, Dale Jarrett led the most laps. 
And there we see Jimmy Spencer led a lap back in 20s. Jeremy Mayfield did finish 30th. And the bad news for Jeff Gordon was that he finished in 35th position because of the crash just a little past the halfway point. The unofficial point standings now we're going to show you. Mark Martin with a 13-point advantage on Jeff Gordon as we go to Darlington with Jarrett now 171 behind in third position. And Ricky Rudd does move back into the top 10. Well, Dale Jarrett is uh, still sitting in the car. He's about to bail out of that thing, though. Yeah, here we go. Let's go down to our McDonald's Winter Circle interview. Well, Dale Jarrett climbs out of a car, gets a big hug from wife Kelly. Get in here, Kelly, and gets a big drink of Gatorade. DJ, congratulations. Short track win number one. Yeah, now they won't know what to talk about on the short tracks. So I've got the victory, so you won't be able to ask that question. But thanks to Todd and all the guys. Uh, this was a brand-new car we brought here. Never been on the racetrack, and they did just an awesome job. Worked on it all night. It wasn't good all the time, but uh, it was pretty good. And I got a little too cautious there at the end almost, but uh, I thought I had Mark inside, and everything was okay. I just wanted to make sure I got back around. And I uh, want to thank God for the talents that he's given all of his crew and hope that everybody was okay in the big wreck. And uh, just a great night for us. Word we've gotten so far, DJ, everybody okay out there. Now, you managed to make a move by uh, Mark Martin with oil in turns one and two and get the lead back. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was a little bit, uh, it was a little treacherous down there. And I knew Mark was slipping and sliding and he gave me an opening on the inside and I knew if I could get there that maybe I could beat him down into turn three and, and that's what I was able to do. And then I got a good jump on the restart and uh, you know, everything went great for me. All right, Dale Jarrett picks up career win number 12, his first ever on a short track. He is the winner here in the Goodies Headache Powder 500. Bob? And we got a couple of races coming up for you tomorrow. One here on ESPN at 12.30, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And then another one at 3 o'clock over on the Deuce. Benny and Dave Despain will be there with all of the action. And next, Kenny Irvin Jr. in his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. The second row, Bobby Hamilton, five consecutive top fives here, and Robbie Gordon. In row number three, we have Kenny Wallace and Dick Trickle. In the fourth row, Joe Nemechek and David Green. Row number five, Ken Schrader and Jeff Gordon. The sixth row, the Burton brothers, Jeff on the inside, Ward on the outside. In the seventh row, Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. Take a look now at the rest of the starting lineup as the field warms.